So let's continue our route towards generating the voltage and current equations for our MOS transistor. We've seen in the last video that the current that flows through this device is going to be directly proportional to the depth of the inversion layer in the channel here. And we've seen that the inversion layer depth is directly pro proportional to the V gate minus the V substrate voltage. So that's the gate voltage here and the substrate voltage is going to be the voltage at the other side of the substrate here. So we just call that sub. Equivalently, you can call that the bulk as well. So it's going to be directly proportional to this voltage here minus the VT. So really what's that saying is that the depth of the inversion layer is de determined by how much the gate to substrate voltage is greater than this VT, which in this device here we could say is a VT is a value of 1. So if the gate to substrate voltage is greater than 1 volt, then we're going to have an inversion occurring. And if it's much greater than 1 volt, the inversion layer is going to be deep. Uh, and if it's V gate minus V sub is very close to VT, the inversion layer is just going to be very shallow. So now, so far, we've only looked at what happens at the gate and also the sub. And we know that the substrate here is actually connected to the source. So each time we looked at this, we see V gate minus V sub. Equally, we could say V gate minus V S for the V source. So we've looked at the gate voltage and we've looked at the source voltage and we've seen what happens to this inversion layer as the values have been changing. Values of the gate voltage has changed. But we haven't looked at anything to do with the drain voltage. How does the drain affect any of this? Well, let's look at this example here down below. Let's imagine that we had uh, zero volts here and we had two volts here. And then we had a value of four volts at the gate. Now, the first question to ask is, what side is this drain and what side is the source? So what we mean is, what side do the, the charge carriers come from? Well, in this case here, this is going to be an NMOS device. The charge carriers are electrons. Electrons flow from a low voltage side to a high voltage side. So the electrons must be traveling from the low voltage, which is the source, to the high voltage, which is the drain. So this is the source and this is the drain in this device. Now, the depth of the inversion layer here, we've got a little equation for it up here. So we could say that in this case here, we could say Vg is 4 and the V substrate is the same as the V, the voltage in the source. So this is 4 minus the value of 0. So we've got 4 minus 0. So that's a value of 4. And how much greater is, is 4 volts above the threshold? Well, the threshold is 1 volt, so we could say minus the 1 volt is equal to 3. So at this side here, of the, at this side of the device, the source side of the, the device, the voltage here is going to be 3 volts above the threshold. So we're going to have a deep layer, inversion layer here. So I'll make this, uh, change this to red so that we can see it properly. Okay, so we're going to have a deep inversion layer. So we're going to start with inversion layer, say here at this side. But if we go to the other side of this device, that is at the drain side of it, then what we're going to get is we're going to get the value here in this instance. Rather than saying the V gate, we're going to have the voltage at the drain. So this is the in effect the drain side of this device. So we're going to have the value here is going to be a value of 4 minus the 2. So we're going to have 4, I'll just do it in red here, 4 minus the 2 minus the value of the VT which is 1 
which equals, well, 4 minus 2 minus 1 is 4 minus 3, which is 1 volt. So that means that this side of the device, we're only going to be 1 volt above the threshold. So that means that at this side here, the inversion is not going to be as deep at this side as it is at this side. So it means that we can actually draw this in linearly. So we draw a line in here and we can say that this is the actual inversion channel here. And that channel varies linearly across this length here from the source to the drain. So this device is carrying current, but the source side here is more inverted than the drain side. Now let's look at another example here. Let's say, for example, we had, and I'll change my back to yellow again. Let's say, for example, we had the gate was sitting at 4 volts and the drain is sitting at 5 volts and the source is sitting at 0 volts. Then again, this side here, we could say that our V gate minus the V source, well, first of all, we want to find out, sorry, where the source and the drain are. So again, it's an, it's a, an NMOS device. Electrons are the current, current carriers. Electrons flow from a low voltage to a high voltage. This is the low voltage side, so they come from the low voltage side, which is the source, to the high voltage side, which is the drain. So this is the source and this is the drain. So in this instance here, we can say that our VGS is equal to 4 minus 0. So we get our 4 minus 0. And the VT is a value of 1, so that's minus 1, which is equal to 3. So again, at this end here, it's going to be 3 volts above the threshold. So we're going to get inversion at this side, the same as we got the inversion in this one. But look what happens now whenever we go to the drain end. We're going to have the value of 4 minus the value of 5. And then we're going to have the substrate, which is the VT, sorry, which is minus 1. So we're going to have 4 minus 5 minus 1, which is minus 2. So we're actually going to be the value of 2 volts below the threshold voltage required for inversion. So it means that this side here, the channel will not exist here. The channel will exist somewhere along this length of this, the channel here. So for example, we're going to have a line that goes from here. And if I put it in back in, in red, get the color here. So we're back into red. So it means that the channel is actually going to go from here. And it's a little bit busy here now, but it's going to stop at this point here. So we're not going to get this inversion occurring all the way along the channel. The channel is going to be cut off at a certain point. Now the certain point that that gets cut off is called the pinch off point. So the channel is going to be pinched at this point. So we're not going to get any current flowing through this device. So the adding the drain voltage into this mix changes the equations. So let's go ahead and we'll see how we can add the drain voltage into our equations. Now we can ask from the last example, how far along the channel do we have to go in order to get this pinch off point? That is, when does inversion layer disappear? So these are the values here we had in that last example. We had 4 volts in the gate, we had 5 volts here and 0 volts here. It's an NMOS device, so the Electrons are the charge carriers that go from a low voltage side to a high voltage side. So this is the source, which is the source of the carriers, and this is the drain, is the destination for the carriers. So we know that there's going to be an inversion whenever the V gate source is greater than the threshold voltage. But whenever the V gate source is equal to the threshold voltage, we're going to get the pinch-off point. 
So that is just the point where the inversion just hasn't quite taken place. Now we can ask ourselves where is this, whereabouts is this point along this channel? So you can see here that the V gate source at this side is going to be 4 minus 0, which is going to be uh, a value of 4, so we're 3 above in this case here. But then you can work your way along the channel here. So we can say that this is 0 volts here, this is 5 volts, then we can split the channel into 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So we can split it into 5 equal values. So in effect we're saying that the voltage varies linearly across this channel here. So it means that when does this gate source voltage equal the threshold? Well, the threshold voltage is a value of 1. So when does V gate source equal a value of 1? Well, the gate is going to be a value of 4. So it means that it must be whenever this is going to be 4 minus 3. So it would be 4 minus a value of what? Will it be 3? Would equal 1. So we're going to be 3 fifths of the way along this channel. So it's only it's going to be the three fifths of the point along the channel. So if the channel split into five, it'll be one, two, three. So it's roughly there. So that's the point whenever the we get pinch off, and you can see that inversion is going to take place at that point there, up to that point there. Okay. So we can treat everything really linearly. We just need to look at the voltage drop from the source to drain and then work out from our equations VGS is equal to VT and we can work out where the pinch off point is going to be. So that's enough for the pinch off point. Let's continue on our grand journey to get these equations derived. So we're interested in developing an equation which will tell us whether there's going to be a current flow through this device. That is whether we're going to have inversion over the entire channel. Now, we're going to have inversion at this end of the channel if the voltage from the gate to the drain is greater than or equal to the voltage Vt. So that would give us inversion here. But if that was true and we did have inversion here, then we must have inversion over th this side as well. And we can see that that's true because the value of S is less than the value of D. It's just defined that way. The source is a lower voltage than the drain in this N-type device. So don't get lost in this. It's just simple arithmetic. Uh, the V gate to drain is just like seeing, saying V gate minus V drain. So the V gate voltage minus the V drain voltage is greater than VT. And this other side here is just like saying the VGS is greater than VT. It's saying VG minus the VS is greater than or equal to VT. Now, if this one is true, and we know that this value VS is less than that value of VD, then this one here must be true. So you could just put some numbers in, because I always find this little bit of arithmetic always confusing. You could put in a value of say 5 minus the value of 3, and it's going to be uh, greater than the value of 1. In fact, that value there is 2, isn't it? Now if we come along this bit here and we say that we've still got 5 for VG, and we're taking a value away from VS, let's say VS as a number that's less than VD, so a number that's less than 3, so say for example 1. So 5 minus 1 is going to be greater than or equal to the value of our VT. Okay, which if, if we say our VT as a value of 1, we could say it's greater than or equal to the value of 1. In fact, the value is going to be 4, isn't it? So that's just straightforward um, arithmetic. Now, we could use this equation here, and this equation here uh, would suit, and it would tell us whether there's an inversion across the whole channel. But what we really want is an equation that's got all of the terms in it, so a source, the gate, and the drain terms. And this is the equation that 
we go for here. So if we say that the voltage between the gate and the source minus the voltage between the drain and the source is greater than Vt, then we know we're going to have inversion across the whole of this channel. So this is the equation that we are interested in here. And if you think about this in terms of common sense, it's telling us that we know that if the gate to source voltage, if it's greater than Vt, greater than or equal to Vt, then we're going to have inversion at this side. But not only if we're going to have inversion at this side, but if it's great, not only greater than Vt, but if it's greater than Vt plus the Vds, that is the drain source voltage, it would mean that the channel would be thick at this side here and it would gradually thin out as it headed towards this other side, but it would never disappear because we know that the value for our Vgs minus Vds is going to be greater than the Vt. So the loss here of the inversion channel is not going to be uh, so great that it goes below the value of our Vt. So take your time to think about that. The first time I seen it, I had to scratch my head and I had to think for a few minutes. Uh, I tend to find that I'm quite good at uh, working out uh, complicated uh, theoretically complicated things, but when it comes to uh, simple arithmetic, uh, my strange brain tends to become very confused. Uh, so take your time with it and have a look and see that you, you do understand it and put some numbers in and you'll see that this is the case. So we can rewrite this equation here. We can take the Vt over this side and we've got our Vgs minus Vt is less than or equal to Vds. So this is the equation that we're interested in. And this is the equation that we're going to use in order to find out the different uh, zones in which the uh, this device works. So that's us being beaten by the clock again. That's 17 minutes into this video and I don't want it to go on any longer. There's maybe about another 5 to 10 minutes worth and we'll get it in the next video. So thank you for listening. I'll get you in the next video. Goodbye.